Hello, this is Anvati. Welcome to the news with NDTV. It's Tuesday, November 5th. Coming up in today's episode, Supreme Court judgment on property notes, government cannot take over private property for community good. Supreme Court upholds Madarsa Act in Uttar Pradesh. NCP veteran Sharad Pawar hints at electoral politics retirement and Elon Musk's million-dollar giveaway deemed legal by judge. First up, government cannot take over private property as India is a liberal country. This was the crux of the Supreme Court's landmark judgment related to Article 31C and 39B of Indian Constitution and it overturned a series of judgments from the past. The hearing question states power to acquire privately owned property for the greater good of the community. Not all privately owned properties qualify as community resources that the state can take over for the common good, the Supreme Court said in its verdict today. The nine Dutch constitution bench led by Chief Justice of India D.Y. Chandrachur delivered the judgment on the contentious issue with a 8 is to 1 majority with Justice Sudhanshu Dhulia dissenting. An important note of the court was that India is of a liberal economic ideology rather than socialist. The period of time when these laws were laid down are of a period when Indian society was more socialist in nature. Article 39b lays down that the state shall direct its policy towards ensuring that the ownership and control of the material resources of a community are so distributed as to best subserve the common good of the community. The court was listening to petitions by Property Owners Association of Mumbai to Chapter 8A of the Maharashtra Housing and Area Development Act, Mahara, introduced in 1986. This allowed the state to acquire Mumbai's old dilapidated buildings termed as cessed properties in favour of cooperative societies of the occupiers. This amendment contained a declaration that the Act seeks to give effect to the state policy for securing the objective specified in Article 39B of the Constitution. Simplified, the Mahara Act used 39B of the Constitution to justify taking over of cessed properties and the property owners of Mumbai were displeased with it. The state had claimed that housing stock is a material resource of the community and the construction or reconstruction of the building is for the common good as old buildings are and can be unsafe. However, the property owners have opposed the state's move by arguing that Article 39b cannot comprise privately owned property. In 1977, a seven-judge bench had ruled with a 4 to 3 majority that all privately owned property did not fall within the ambit of material resources of the community. In a minority opinion, however, Justice Krishna Ayer held that both public and private resources fell within the ambit of material resources of the community under the Article 39b. During the hearing today, the Chief Justice pointed out that Justice Ayer referred to communist ideologue Karl Marx in his judgment. Quote, the judgment is rooted in the economic ideology that private property can be used by the state for the welfare of people. The role of this court is not to lay down economic policy but to facilitate to lay down economic democracy. Unquote. He also added that the country's economy has shifted from socialist approach to a liberal economic regime and so that interpretation of Article 39b cannot be applied. In her separate judgment, Justice B. V. Nagaratna disagreed with Chief Justice on his observations regarding the ruling by Justice Ayer. Quote, Justice Krishna Ayer adjudicated on the material resources of a community in the backdrop of a constitutional and economic structure that gave primacy to the state in a broad-sweeping manner. As a matter of fact, the 42nd Amendment had included socialists in the constitution. Can we castigate former judges and allege them a disservice only because of reaching a different interpretative outcome? Unquote. In a huge relief to 16,000 odd madarsas in Uttar Pradesh, the Supreme Court today upheld the validity of a 2004 law that regulates their functioning. A three-judge bench led by Chief Justice of India D.Y. Chandrachur set aside an Allahabad High Court judgment that had declared the law unconstitutional and violative of the principle of secularism. The High Court had asked the state government to accommodate Madarsa students in the former schooling system. This had put a question mark on the future of nearly 17 lakh students of Madarsas. The bench, also comprising Justices J.B. Pardiwala and Manoj Mishra, held that the High Court had erred in holding that the statue must be struck down if it violates secularism principle. Quote, 
The state can regulate the standards of education in madarsas. Regulations relating to the quality of education do not interfere with the administration of madarsa, unquote, the Chief Justice added. The bench noted that the Act does not directly interfere with the day-to-day -day administration of madarsas and said the Act is consistent with the positive obligation of the state to ensure that the children get adequate education. The Chief Justice held that just because the legislation for madarsas includes some religious training, does not make it unconstitutional. The Act, he said, is only unconstitutional in granting degrees under Fazil and Kamil because this provision violates UGC guidelines, he noted. The Act, the Chief Justice said, aims to protect the rights of minorities in Uttar Pradesh and is consistent with the state's obligation to ensure that students pass out and earn a decent living. Nationalist Congress Party leader Sharad Pawar, who is 83 years old, has hinted at retiring from electoral politics. He said that he may not contest any more elections after his Rajya Sabha term ends in 18 months. The veteran politician and the patriarch of Pawar political family had set up NCP in 1999 and is widely regarded as the grand old man of Maharashtra politics. He was speaking at his family stronghold of Baramati in Western Maharashtra which will see a second Pawar versus Pawar contest on November 20th during the Assembly election. Quote, I'm not in power and my tenure in the Rajya Sabha has only one and a half years left. I will not contest any election in the future. I have to stop somewhere. Unquote. He said thanking the voters of Baramati for making him an MP and MLA a whopping 14 number of times during his political career. Baramati, which has been seen as a Pawar stronghold for decades because it elected Mr. Pawar to the post of MP and MLA 14 odd times. The people of Baramati saw a divided conflict within the Pawar family during the Lok Sabha elections this year as his nephew Ajit Pawar broke away from the Pawar family and NCP, took his rebel MLAs and joined the Mahayuti or the ruling alliance of BJP, Eknath Shinde's Shiv Sena and now Ajit Pawar's NCP. In a long drawn out battle in the courts and with the Election Commission of India, the Pawar political family symbol and party name was awarded to NCP's Ajit Pawar, and the Pawar family patriarch led faction was named NCP Sharachand Pawar. The potential close of a nearly six decade long political career comes as NCP and its allies, the Congress and the Uddhav Thakre led Shiv Sena group, are contesting in this month's election. And in that context, the fight for Baramati is being seen as a referendum on Sharad Pawar's continuing influence over the voters. Since his grandnephew, Yugendra Pawar, is battling against his nephew Ajit Pawar, who led the rebellion last year that forced NCP to split. Ajit Pawar is a five-time MLA from Baramati, but in each of his earlier wins, he had the backing of his uncle's party. This will be the first state poll in which he is contesting under his own banner. During the Lok Sabha elections, the people of Baramati voted overwhelmingly for Sharad Pawar's candidate, which was his daughter Supriya Shule, and Ajit Pawar had filled it his wife for the same seat. Breaking from breaking news, wedding season is upon us and apart from the families of brides and grooms, the most excited people are involved in the wedding industry. The upcoming wedding season in India, which will extend from November 12 till December 16, is likely to generate business worth nearly 6 lakh crore from 48 lakh weddings, which constitutes 41% increase over corresponding figure of 4.2 lakh crore recorded for 35 lakh weddings last year, according to a study carried out by Confederation of All India Traders or CAT. CAT estimates that 10 lakh weddings involving spending of 3 lakh per wedding, 10 lakh weddings will involve spending of 6 lakh per wedding, and 7 lakh will involve 25 lakh per wedding. And around 50,000 weddings in India this year will have a budget of 1 crore or more per wedding. Now, back to news. Elon Musk can legally keep up his $1 million to voters plan, a judge has ruled. Musk, the world's richest man, CEO of mega corporations like Tesla, SpaceX and former Twitter, now known as X, and an open supporter of Republican Donald Trump, had announced last month a giveaway in seven battleground states, likely to decide the outcome of the United States' 2024 election, with a rider that they will be awarded if they sign a petition to protect First and Second Amendments of the US Constitution, which are namely right to free speech and the right to bear arms. 
in the backdrop of Musk's hundreds of social media posts, interviews and public rally support of the presidential hopeful Trump. Many saw this announcement as a way to ensure more votes for the Republican candidate. Musk gave $75 million to America PAC, a political action committee that has been funding various Republican candidates, including former President Trump. Quote, We are going to be awarding $1 million randomly to people who have signed the petition. Every day from now until the election, unquote, Musk had said at the campaign event. However, a few days later, the U.S. Justice Department warned that the group could be breaking election laws which forbid people paying to register to vote. And a lawyer sued to stop it. Philadelphia District Attorney Lawrence Krashner had sued to stop what he called an illegal lottery after Musk announced he would give the money to one voter in a swing state each day until election day. He also called the process a scam designed to actually influence a national election and asked that it should be shut down. More than a million people from the swing states had signed the petition and District Attorney Krasner had questioned how the PAC might use their data, which it will have on hand well past the election. Quote, they, being the people who signed the petition, were scammed for their information. It has almost unlimited use, Krasner said. However, despite the objections, the judge in Pennsylvania ruled in favour of Musk and his America PAC. Musk previously claimed that winners would be chosen at random, but Musk lawyer Chris Gober said the final two recipients before the presidential election would be announced in Arizona on Monday and Michigan on Tuesday. And fortunately, that is exactly what happened. The lawyer's statements proved that the money had not been chosen randomly in a lottery-style contest, as many had believed, but were selected by the group. Pennsylvania Judge Angelo Foglietta did not immediately give a reason for the ruling that he made a few hours after the hearing, according to the Associated Press. Those who receive the money have signed a non-disclosure agreement that will block them from publicly discussing the terms of the contracts, according to Reuters. America is voting today to elect its next president. Republican candidate Donald Trump is going against Democratic presidential hopeful and current Vice President Kamala Harris. Based on recent polls and surveys, it is a very neck-to-neck fight and no one seems to have an upper hand over the other as of now. But the voting day has begun and anything could change tomorrow. That's all for today. You were listening to the News with NDTV, your daily newspaper and TV bulletin wrapped in a compact podcast. If you want to catch up with the day's events in a hurry, do remember to subscribe to the News with NDTV on Apple, Spotify and the NDTV News app. This is your host Anvithi signing off.